Mars? Your Facebook status hasn't been updated for a long time. What have you been up to lately? Well, I've just been doing some research on someone called Mary Midgley and how her ideas apply to accounting theory. Oh, that sounds interesting. But who is Mary Midgley? Mary Midgley is actually a former professor from Newcastle University who taught philosophy. And she's worked on various philosophical applications to science, ethics, and animal rights. In her work, she uses a non-realist ontological assumption and believes strongly in interpretivism. What is her take on scientific theory? Midgley's perspective on scientific theories is actually that they are simply a means to provide an understanding of the world around us and to satisfy the desire of people to know why things are the way they are. Very much like how myths were used in ancient civilizations to explain certain phenomena that, were, that they were unable to fully comprehend. In applying Midgley's view to the accounting world, she would believe that there is no absolute theory as we live in an ever-changing environment, and as new knowledge becomes available, new, more applicable theories will arise. This view has often been met with criticism and has been seen as being irrational to many people, especially scientists, since they see scientific theory as fact that has been proven through empirical research. Although in terms of scientific theory, this perspective may be more contentious, its application to accounting is much more reasonable, as there is no definitive theory on accounting. Mary Midgley also describes the idea of the imaginative picture in relation to the modern myth, in which she argues that through the use of theories, people pontificate their own realities, and in doing so, do not consider other users. This is actually very apparent in the accounting world, as there are many examples where realities are in a sense created. One example is the idea of net income because this number includes various estimates like amortization and bad debt expense. These numbers cannot be considered real since they are based on estimates that were created by accountants. Can you tell me more of our ideas? Yes, I was about to meet up with a few of my friends who also happen to be studying Mary Midgley. I was actually just on my way to see Monkey. This is Hippo. She's very interested in Mary Midgley. Can you explain what you've been researching? Yeah, sure. So one of the things that Midgley states is that as theories are being developed, they tend to incorporate an element of myth-making. So basically when these theories are no longer valid from a scientific or a philosophical perspective, uh, people try to maintain support for them through other less valid means, one of them being rhetoric, which is a way that people try to persuade others to their point of view. And what happens is that sometimes they try to link two ideas without actually establishing a relationship between the two of them, or by saying things like, oh, it's the way it was done last year, or it's how everyone else does it. And if you look at positive accounting theory, uh, Tom Rick, who incorporates ideas by Mary Midgley, uh, states that an advocate of PAD, they try to appeal to the authority of science, uh, including economic science, even though that link uh, has been severed by economic thinkers. As well, they try to uh, make claims to being the only neutral way of knowledge, which is not very possible since they try to make, they make value judgments in deciding what are research, researchable problems. Another thing that they do is that they try to put down alternative views, saying they're not valid because they're not scientific. And what we see here is that this desire to preserve uh, existing dominant theories and accounting standards is, to, is a way to further political interests and power potential. And what it ha happens is that it can hinder um, reforms to accounting standards. Like if you consider pre-Enron, it was pretty hard to advocate either independence from the consulting arm for a CA firm or trying to expand stock options. And so basically this is, um, these are consequences of using rhetoric. Right, so does this answer your question, Hippo? Um, I guess. Okay, well, thanks Monkey. Uh, I guess I'll let you go back to sleep now. Alright, you're welcome. Okay, bye, bye. Bye. Bye, bye Hippo. Hey, Liger. Hey, Horace. Oh, by the way, it's live. Anyways, what's up? Um, actually, my friend Hippo was just wondering something about Midgley's take on Darwinism and how it applies to accounting theory. Oh. Oh, that. Then I have to start with the debate between Darkin and Midgley. Basically, what Midgley says is that uh, she believes cooperation is necessary for survival, whereas Darkin believes in competition is necessary for evolution. In terms of how it applies to accounting principles, it can be used to explain the recent failure of CMR. 
As seen by Medjali's perspective, CMR fails due to the competition nature of human, which resulted in various fraudulent activities, and insider trading, which resulted in profits from only certain group of individuals. If everyone would have cooperated, CMR would have succeeded, and then the society could have moved on to another era or milestone, because everyone would have worked together to achieve for better results, hence the market would have created a bigger profit for everyone else. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Lion. I guess it's time to go see Tiger now. Huh? Does that mean we have to walk more? But I'm tired! Hey, Lion, do you think you could give us a ride there? Oh, what's up, buddy? Can't believe Lion chased us like that! Yeah, I know. What an individualist. Speaking of individualists, Midgley mentions the drama of the individualist age, whereby Individuals pursue their own self-interest and engage in endless competition. In agency theory, a relationship exists when one party, the principal, delegates responsibilities to another party, the agent. Positive accounting theory states that these parties will act in their own self-interest. In the case of a company, shareholders want to maximize their wealth while managers are interested in maximizing their rewards, such as bonuses, which is not best for overall utility for the society. Information asymmetry between owners and managers affects the way resources are allocated among the firm. This arises when one of the parties, the managers, have information that is not made available to others, for example, the owners. Managers may then use this information to manipulate earnings in order to increase their rewards. In this case, managers acting in their own self-interest do not necessarily increase the utility of overall society. There is evidence that not all societies are based on this individualist age. Japan, for example, is a collectivist nation. Oh, that's, that's why, why agency, agency theory, theory fails. fails. This is all too complicated. Hmm, actually, being too simplified has caused some problems in theorizing. So what type of problems have arisen? Well, since the 17th century, there has been an increasing belief that science provides the answer to all questions because there's a simple structure to the universe. So if only we can find that, then everything will come out right. This notion then translated into an obsession with total order and total simplicity. Arguably, Midgley believes that accountants have adopted this scientific view that simple is best. When presented with multiple treatments to an accounting item, the simplest alternative is often chosen and becomes the common practice. Over time, one must question whether the mainstream accounting is faithfully representing the reporting entity or just a collection of simplified accounting treatments. Further, financial reporting primarily focuses on the economic aspect without much regard for social, environmental, political, and ethical implications. Is accounting practice therefore overly simplified? What about corporate social responsibility? Social and environmental reporting? Global reporting initiative? Should accountants consider full cost accounting? Perhaps it's a need for scientific... Pluralism. Which is the view that multiple models and explanations are required to account for the nature of an observed phenomenon. In other words, Mitchley would argue that maybe we need to view accounting through multiple windows before we can faithfully construct the whole picture. Hey, where did Tiger go? Hey! <sighs> These impatient animals. So what do you think about Mary Mitchley's views on accounting theory? <laughs> now this is some pretty good stories. Mitchley enables us to see the world differently and reassesses some of our fundamental ways of thinking. However, she doesn't criticize her own theory. It is often easier for a third party to step back and observe someone else's flaws. Mitchley succeeded in stating the problems which are logically sound and valid, but she failed to explain whether there is any effective solution that could address the fundamentally flawed accounting theory, which is scientifically and philosophically based. Also, there is no mention of any sort of methodology. If there is a lack of methodology that can be applied to gain knowledge, what is the point of all these fancy ideas? Is it Mitchley creating her own myths and rhetoric to describe the world? Mitchley is overly optimistic on human behavior. She believes that people can cooperate, but people are self-interested and won't cooperate unless it benefits both parties. People are interconnected, but often people take advantage of the weaker people. Her recommendations to incorporate the principles of the Gaia theory is over simplistic and doesn't take into account of the complexity of life. Life is too complex and has too many components for us to take into account all of them. It's easy to be said than to be done.
And that's our take on Mary Midgley. Thank you for your time. <laughs>